Hello everyone, and this is my review for WrestleMania 28. And I'm going to go off and I'm just going to try to go right down the line and for, uh, give a review for each match as they happened. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with this Daniel Bryan and Sheamus. And this, uh, if people with timing on this, uh, this might last longer than the match itself. Honestly, with this match, I was thoroughly disappointed because, just because it was so short. It, it timed out at 18 seconds, which was pretty much the kiss, then the bro kick, then the pin. And... And honestly, this is the second straight year that this match has been snubbed. Uh, last year with WrestleMania 27, they pulled it off of the main card and put it on, on the uh, pre-show. And now this year they made it a quick world title match. And honestly, for these two these two uh, performers in the ring, they couldn't perform really good matches in the ring. And it's just disappointing to see them, you know, not give them the time that is needed. Then... Uh, that's pretty much all I gotta say on that. That's you know, it's it's disappointing that it was so short. Uh, let's go go on though to the Kane and Randy Orton match. And this this match here, at least in my terms, m most people didn't like the storyline going into this. And honestly, they just threw threw this match together so these two could have a match on the on the show. Way Barrett got injured, which is obviously where they were gonna go with Randy Orton. Who knows where they would have gone with Kane? Uh, but they, uh, honestly, in the, with the match itself, I felt like they told a good story in the match. It, and just having Kane go over as well, the, the in-ring action and the storytelling that these two pulled off in the ring, I thought they did a really good job and they and performed themselves a really good match there. And... Uh, just the fact of having Kane go over, which is what most people would not have expected in this case, was just a little bit of icing on the cake. I felt this match was was um, not extremely good, but really good for uh, what time they had to work with and what story and what storyline going into the match they had to work with. So I felt like it was really uh, in my in my mind felt it was really good. Uh, next match that I'm going to go go on to, which was obviously the Big Show Cody Rhodes match for the Intercontinental Title. Um, it, it was an okay match. It was somewhat of a squash match in the end. Uh, not full squash match, just somewhat of one. I mean, Cody obviously got offense in there, but um, but just the aspect of you know, it's it's really hard to work with the. Uh, it's not really hard to work with the Big Show, but it's just it's when you're a guy Cody size and you have a guy with uh, the size of Big Show, it's a little bit harder to work the match and not make it look like a squash match from the get go. And I felt like they at least got the, the aspect that, you know, Cody Rhodes is formidable. He could get uh, he could get Big Show down. He could get this. He, he, he could do uh, some of his moves against them. Obviously, not all of his finishers, but I, I felt they did an okay job with this. Uh, having Big Show at least get his WrestleMania moment, you know, getting a win at WrestleMania was a nice little touch that they threw in there. And I honestly... It wasn't as bad as what I believe many other people are thinking it is. I haven't read any of the other reviews, but I just get that feeling that a lot of people are going going to uh, harp and you know downgrade this match. Um, but that it, it is what it is on that. I felt it was decent. It wasn't uh, great. It wasn't really good, but it was at least decent. Um, same goes for the Divas Tag Team match with uh, Kelly Kelly and. Uh, the extras host versus Eve and Beth Phoenix. Uh, some of the moves were, you know, really, some of the moves that they did in the ring, they, they did a really good job at it. Uh, they did with what they could. Obviously, um, Maria was uh, injured before coming in there. They, there wasn't much they could do with her. And honestly, they, they worked with what they could. Obviously, a lot of it working around Kelly and Beth and uh, somewhat with Eve in there as well. And uh, obviously, obviously, this is the, the celebrity match of the show. So obviously, the celebrity is going to go over there. Maria getting the pin on Beth. Oh well, oh well on that aspect. Uh, it was an okay match, nothing great. Uh, but that it is what it is. There, it's a celebrity match, and it was also the deepest match of the night. So uh, you got what you got. You got some decent stuff out of it, but nothing great in the end. Obviously. Uh, this brings me on to what was called the end of the era, the Hell in the Cell match. And the story, and, and just the, with the, you know, just everything with Undertaker and Triple H leading into it from the year before, and then leading into it with adding Shawn Michaels as a special guest referee, well, 
Um, it, in the match itself, it just came off extremely good to me. They told them they told a great story in the ring. All three of them did. Uh, from you know Triple H having the main control and Shawn wanting to stop the match, Undertaker refusing it, refusing to do so, and then going into the turnabout with you know Undertaker knocking out Shawn Michaels, then he gets super kicked and Pedigree kicks out the entire match itself uh, from beginning to end the story that those two uh, told uh, told in the ring was extremely well done it was a it, you you felt like it was just a brutal beat down match inside of the inside of the uh, cell there and it, i mean obviously there wasn't uh, a lot of blood which it was which was the aspect of uh, hell in a cell in the past but you, they got across without really doing the whole blood thing Getting the uh, you know just getting the aspect of it being a brutal match across to the fans extremely well. They were into it from the beginning to the end. I thought it was great. Probably one of uh, and from what I've been watching and uh, from all the WrestleManias I've watched in the past, this is probably one of my favorite matches now. Uh, just the, these two. It's not my top match, but it's definitely up there on one of my favorite matches to watch of all time for WrestleManias. Uh, after that was the 12 man tag team match. Uh, honestly, I felt like there was some really good action in there. There was a really good storyline behind this with, uh, with it being Team Teddy versus Team Johnny. You had some really good action in there. Uh, I, honestly, I, I did not mind the whole you know Eve getting in the ring and, and pretty much costing Team Teddy there in the end. That's good. That plays to her character that she she wants to be behind Zack Ryder and everything, but she's just kind of using him to get uh, get where she wants. And costing Team Teddy the match kind of it, it kind of worked for me. And like I said before, you had some really good in, in ring action in there. I felt it was uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't designed to be a great match, but it was a decent match. It was a lot of fun to watch. And the, the little tidbit at the end with Eve kicking Zack Ryder below the belt was a, was a nice little touch and fully solidifies her as, a, her as the heel. And she's obviously going to go away from Zack Ryder or they're going to start a feud together. Who knows what they're exactly going to do there. Um, but pretty much, I felt like everybody in the match, they had a nice little part in it. They were able to at least showcase a move or two, get in there. The only person that was really a downfall to the match to me was the great Kali. But uh, Kali had, just the way his body's built and everything, it's really hard for him to do anything overly um, exciting to watch. So... It is what it is there. He was pretty much the only down point to that match in my mind. Um, the next match is obviously the CM Punk Chris Jericho match. And this is my second favorite match of the night. Obviously, Undertaker Triple H is my favorite match of the night right there. This is my second favorite. They told um, the added stipulation with CM Punk. Uh, Getting, if he got disqualified and would, he would lose the WWE title, I don't think they actually needed to do uh, needed to put that in there, but it did not add a nice little uh, storytelling element for the beginning of the match. You know, Jericho trying to get Punk disqualified so he would just lose the title that way, and then they kind of just got away from that. And unfortunately, it felt like the the crowd died a little bit while they were trying to tell that part of the story in the ring. But it the crowd picked up and everything going into the rest of the match. Which was an extremely good, an extremely great wrestling match between the two of them. They put, the, especially at the end there with all the reversals, you know, reversing from the walls of Jericho, going into the roll, uh, them two rolling up, uh, reversing roll ups, going into the Anaconda Vice, Jericho getting out of there, and eventually leading into the finish with Jericho tapping out to the end of kind of vice. It was all extremely well done and everything in between there was extremely well told. I thought it was a really good uh, a really good story they told in the ring and it felt like it was uh, it, it came across that way and it just it, it was a great match overall and it was a lot of fun to watch. Now uh, the next little segment they had which was Brutus Clay and well, moving on. Let's go to the main event uh, after the, after that. I'm not really going to talk about too much about the musical performances beforehand uh, for John Cena and for The Rock's entrance. It is what it was. Uh, they weren't bad. Uh, obviously, they could perform in front of a live crowd. They 
Uh, both uh, both of them, both uh, performers sounded extremely well, but uh, it, I didn't really. It, maybe it's just me. I'm not really a big rap type person, so in that aspect, but I, it felt like the, uh, them performing live, that they did definitely perform well live, and it would sound great to anybody who uh, prefers listening to either one of their, uh, either one of those groups right there. Uh, now to the match itself. Uh, I had expectations for the Rocks, uh, Rock Cena match. My expectations weren't really set all that high. My expectations for that match were uh, put on a mediocre match, tell a decent story, and then let the fans carry the rest of the match to make it seem epic. Um, in the end, at least in my mind, uh, they told a good story uh, in the ring. Uh, both of them did. Uh, you got a pretty good match. You got more than just a decent match out of them. It was a pretty damn good match. And the fans made it seem a little bit more epic than what it was. So that's exactly what I was expecting out of, the, out of the Rock and Cena match. I wasn't expecting anything special. I wasn't expecting them to pull some new move out of nowhere for uh, in front of the fans and try to go a completely different direction of what they uh, what they've been before. Both of them are both Rock and Cena are essentially Hulk Hogan. So I was really worried about this match being bad because both of them were essentially Hulk Hogan. Both of them always have thrived on getting beaten up and then coming back and ending the match within a few moves. So I was always a little, that's what made made me worry. And in the end, I felt like you got a pretty good match out of it. You, you got a well-told story by both guys in the ring. And the fans definitely made this match seem a lot more epic than what it was. And honestly, this match, uh, which was supposed to pit Icon versus Icon, uh, Rock, a past Icon, versus John Cena, a current Icon, that match was a lot better than the Rock-Hogan match that would happen in Toronto 10 years ago, in my mind. So, uh, because, and that was mostly because back then, um, it might have been just because of age difference or something like that. There was just a lot of botching going on in there at that point in time. Here, no real botches. It was really good. It, it, they did all their moves and they performed them extremely well. I felt like it was uh, pretty well done. Uh, so, overall, I'd probably give WrestleMania. It was a pretty decent WrestleMania. Um, uh, probably in the terms of uh, more in the terms of good than decent, I would probably give it about a seven out of ten. It it was definitely a lot of fun to watch. I had a few friends over. We ended up uh, ended up watching. We all had a lot of fun watching. And overall, the show itself just it was a pretty it was a pretty good show this time around. Uh, and you know that's pretty much all I've got to say about uh, WrestleMania 28. Uh, I hope you guys do enjoy my review here. I will be doing a Monday Night Raw review uh, tomorrow uh, morning or afternoon or close to the evening here. And, uh, hope, and hopefully, like I said, you'll enjoy my reviews coming up here in the near future. And I do thank you for watching.